So here is uh, the syntax, uh, and um, as you can see, um, it, it, again, it gives you all the information um, that we had requested uh, previously. I actually uh, deleted uh, the um, Bonferroni uh, pairwise comparisons because that's not what we're wanting in this case. Um, now, to run plan contrast, we'll, we'll use the uh, L, L matrix command, and uh, essentially, we just type in backslash L matrix. Uh, we could actually give it an, a, a name or a title. I'll just put in single quotes. I'll say, you know, group one versus uh, group uh, two. And that'll just be a simple uh, plan contrast um, comparing uh, group one and two on each of the dependent variables. Let me get this out of here. Um, and um, so what I'll do is I'll just type in on the next line, I just type the name of the independent variable and the contrast coefficient. So I'll have one, negative one, and zero for that. Uh, if I want to stop at this point and just have this one contrast, I'll put a period at the end. Without a period, nothing runs. So I'll do a quick uh, complex contrast as well. So I'll just type in L matrix, <clears throat> um, average of one and two versus uh, group three. So this will be a complex contrast. Uh, so in this particular case, I'll just uh, type again the um, name of the independent variable. I'll just say one half, one half for the contrast codes, and then negative one because we're comparing the average of the mean for groups one and two versus the mean for group three for each of the dependent variables. So um, I, I can highlight all this and uh, click on uh, run. And uh, you'll see, uh, once again, we have all the same information we had previously. Uh, but in this case, now I've got my contrast. So you can see that um, for the first uh, set of contrasts, group one versus group two, uh, you can see uh, the difference in means uh, between those two. So it actually favors uh, the second group was actually a little bit higher than the first group um, <clears throat> in terms of um, scores on uh, self-efficacy. Uh, nevertheless, that difference was not significant. Uh, when we compare on utility, um, excuse me, once again, uh, you can see that there's very little difference between groups, and that was not significant. So these are the p-values right here uh, for your contrast test. So, uh, and in fact, if you just take the difference divided by standard error, it's distributed as a t, and um, so uh, the contrasts are really nothing more than um, t-tests um, that um, where uh, the mean square error from the uh, ANCOVAs are, are utilized in the um, denominator so um, of the uh, T formula, um, or at least in terms of the computation of the standard error. Um, so at any rate, um, so kind of moving on and looking at um, the second set of contrasts, here you can see that we have uh, the comparison of the average of the means for groups one and two versus the mean for group three. So the uh, mean difference that you observe right here is 5.184. So the average of groups one and two, uh, the average of those uh, uh, um, uh, adjusted means was um, 5.184 points higher uh, than the than the adjusted group mean for group three, and you can see that that was a there was a significant difference um, between uh, the those groups uh, for this contrast. For uh, and that was for our self-efficacy dependent variable for perceived utility. You can see that the average of the means for groups one and two uh, was significantly greater than uh, the um, uh, mean for group uh, three. So. Uh, like I said, you know, you can basically uh, perform these analyses just like you would uh, following a standard univariate ANOVA, and in fact, these are, are really, or excuse me, a, a standard univariate uh, ANCOVA, uh, and, um, you know, you want to keep in mind that the downset, downside of, uh, of doing these types of follow-ups, whether it be the planned contrast or the um, um, uh, uh, Bonferroni uh, post hoc strategy, uh, is that all these different analyses from this point forward um, ignore the intercorrelations among the dependent variables. So, um, and which really essentially violates the spirit of the original uh, MANCOVA. 
because we're essentially assuming that the dependent variables are intercorrelated and we want to take into account those intercorrelations when we uh, uh, are comparing the groups. So that's what the MANCOVA allows us to do. Whereas following up with the univariate uh, ANCOVAs and then following up that with either plan contrast or post hoc tests um, really just kind of violates uh, the spirit of that um, uh, assumption. So um, one strategy around this uh, problem uh, might be to perform what's called step-down analysis. Uh, so to perform that type of analysis, you have to use syntax. So uh, to do this, we go to File, New, and uh, go down to Syntax. And um, so to perform the step-down analysis, uh, I generally will start it with a title of some sort. So I'll title it uh, Step-Down. Um, just for lack of a better way of uh, titling it, uh, and then uh, end it with a, um, uh, a period. And so you can see that uh, title uh, then turns blue, uh, and the title is actually in single quotes right here. So next I will um, uh, indicate MANOVA as my uh, command. And then for step-down analysis, you identify those dependent variables. You basically assign a, a priority to them in terms of which uh, dependent variables will be uh, um, which groups will uh, which dependent variables will be utilized to uh, compare the groups <clears throat> first followed by uh, those that, that come later so um, let's say I assign priority to uh, perceived utility and then uh, second priority to um, uh, self FC okay so um, Essentially, perceived utility between groups effects uh, for utility will be examined first, followed by between subjects effects for self-efficacy. Um, then we'll follow this with the by command and then the name of the independent variable. Uh, in the parenthesis, we'll, we'll type in the minimum and maximum values for uh, our independent variable. So <clears throat> if we were running a step down, just following um, just a standard uh, MANOVA with utility and self-efficacy as dependent variables, uh, then, then we would um, um, essentially uh, place a um, backslash right here. And in the next line, we would say uh, print equals cell info uh, means uh, signif step down uh, backslash and then period. But in this particular case, because we're adding a covariate to the model, we want to perform the step-down analysis while covariating out that control variable. So to do this, uh, we'll follow up with um, by including a with statement. And then the covariate was uh, intrinsic motivation. So now we are basically conducting a MANCOVA uh, with utility and self-efficacy as dependent variables. Plan is our independent variable with covariate of intrinsic motivation. <clears throat> so to do this, we just uh, highlight uh, uh, our, our statements and click on Run. And you'll notice that uh, in looking at our, our results, we've got uh, means and standard deviations for um, perceived utility, self-efficacy, and intrinsic motivation, our covariate um, intrinsic motivation. You'll notice that uh, essentially um, We'll keep scrolling down, and you'll notice that we've got um, we've got our uh, multivariate uh, regression results concerning uh, the uh, effect of the covariate on the dependent variable. So you can see Wilkes light here is 0.83895, um, and you know if we went go back up to our original uh, Mancova. You can see that our Wilkes was 0.839. So, uh, you know, essentially that's replaying the uh, effect of the covariate on uh, the set of dependent variables. So you can see again that uh, this was uh, statistically significant at the 0.05 level. You've got um, the uh, within basically the univariate and cover results. So these are just the tests of the covariate on each of the dependent variables uh, that you see right here. Um, Next, you'll notice that you've got uh, the step-down F test concerning the effect of the covariate on each of the uh, dependent variables. So essentially, the first test uh, is, is just a zero order, a test of the zero order predictive relationship between uh, IM, which was our uh, predictor variable, and uh, perceived utility. 
So uh, you can see right here that um, this is the, um, the F value for that test, and you can see that it was statistically significant at 0 0.004. The second test of the effect of the covariate on uh, self-efficacy uh, involves looking at the relationship between intrinsic motivation and self-efficacy while controlling for utility. So you can see that uh, the relationship between intrinsic motivation and self-efficacy that relationship was non-significant while controlling for the effects of utility. And that's different from the, uh, the, um, uh, the uh, univariate and cover results where we're looking at the effect of intrinsic motivation on each of the dependent variables uh, independently without considering their intercorrelation. So you can see right up here that uh, here's the F value for the, uh, for the uh, relationship between intrinsic motivation and utility. Uh, there's our significance level, and you can see it mirrors what we see right here. Uh, for the second test, looking at the effect on self-efficacy, uh, uh, well, excuse me, right here, that's just error mean square. Uh, here's the F value, and you can see that that was not statistically significant, but you can see that the F value actually gets lower, and um, um, you can see the P value actually uh, jumps up considerably because in this case right here we are looking at the effect of intrinsic motivation on self-efficacy after controlling for uh, the uh, uh, dependent variable that was in the previous uh, analysis and that uh, control variable was perceived utility. So um, <clears throat> you know moving down a little bit further you can see that we've got um, the uh, multivariate uh, test results for the between groups effect of uh, plan on our set of dependent variables. So that's the Wilkes lambda that we saw previously in our uh, MANOVA results above. Uh, these tests right here, these are the uh, univariate and COVAs uh, where we're actually testing the between subjects effects of plan on each of the dependent variables. And like I said, this is ignoring the intercorrelations among the dependent variables. So this is the default uh, univariate and cover results that we had previously uh, that was following up the MANOVA output. So you can see you've got you know, your F values for the between subjects of tests. Um, and you can see that uh, both tests were statistically significant. Um, now, we have the step-down uh, tests for uh, the effect of plan variable or between uh, group uh, variable on perceived utility and this is not controlling for any covariates so here we have our uh, F value which is the same as what we saw up here in the first row uh, and that's because there's no control variable that is being included in the ANCOVA model and you can see that we have significant group differences uh, on perceived utility um, you know, uh, and, and so these are significant group differences um, in terms of the adjusted group means because we're still covariating out the effects of the uh, intrinsic motivation variable. The next uh, test is a test of between subjects effects or between groups effects on self-efficacy while controlling for perceived utility. So here we have <clears throat> our F value and you can see that it's substantially lower than what we had previously when we were not co covariating out or controlling for perceived utility. And you can see here it actually becomes non-significant. So kind of going back and rethinking um, our analyses, uh, our step-down results, we would say uh, you know, the multivariate test suggests that there is a, a significant predictive relationship between um, our predictor, our, our uh, covariate intrinsic motivation and the set of dependent variables. As you can see, uh, the uh, significance test uh, uh, was, our p-value was less than 0.05 or conventional threshold of 0.05. Uh, so we would uh, say that yes, there's a significant predictive relationship between the covariate and uh, the set of uh, dependent variables. When we uh, look at the effect of um, and when we look at the um, uh, Roy Bargman's uh, step-down test, you can see that uh, the effect of the intrinsic motivation variable on perceived utility, uh, while not controlling for anything else, that effect was statistically significant. Um, when we look at the effect of uh, intrinsic motivation on self-efficacy, 
while controlling for uh, perceived utility, which was uh, the dependent variable in the previous analysis, we see that there was no significant uh, relationship. So um, that's how you would interpret that part. And then in terms of uh, looking at uh, the test of between subjects effects, when we go down and we look at the uh, MANOVA results, you can see that the effect of plan on the set of dependent variables, uh, there's your Wilkes lambda value, and that was statistically significant. Uh, when you look at the uh, step down results, you see uh, that basically <clears throat> uh, the effect of plan on perceived utility, uh, while um, um, essentially controlling for intrinsic motivation above, um, but not self-efficacy, you can see that uh, that effect was statistically significant. So there were significant between group differences in the adjusted means on uh, utility. Um, when we uh, look at the uh, between groups differences on self-efficacy while controlling for uh, both the intrinsic motivation covariate and now perceived utility as a covariate, you can see that there was no significant differences in adjusted group means on self-efficacy. So you want to keep in mind that uh, basically um, if you are running a step-down analysis, you need to um, essentially identify a priority uh, concerning your um, your dependent variables, uh, basically order deciding on which variable um, uh, get, is given top priority versus the other variables, uh, because that impacts which which uh, of the dependent variables are being covariated in subsequent uh, analyses. So um, this can be due to this can be uh, this prioritization can be made based on a logical considerations or theoretical considerations, but you do need to establish some type of um, logical ordering or theoretical ordering of your dependent variables. And I will state, uh, you know, one other possibility uh, if you can't establish any kind of logical ordering might just be to carry out separate um, uh, ANCOVAs. Uh, where you are covariating out uh, uh, the dependent variables from each ANCOVA if you couldn't establish, say, an a priori prioritization um, as you would in the case of uh, step-down analysis. So that concludes this discussion of, um, of uh, one-way MANCOVA and univariate and uh, step-down uh, follow-up procedures.